Hello scientists, this is Miss Cordova from Viewlands Elementary. I teach second grade. And today we are going to go on another outdoor walk. Quick reminder before we go outside, while it's lovely to enjoy the breeze and the morning and some sunshine and maybe some clouds today, I wanna to make sure that if I see a neighbor or anybody walking by, I stay six feet away and give them their space. So today what I wanted us to think about is I wanted us to think about the plants and animals that live in our ecosystems and our neighborhoods. So before I went outside, I just took some time to, to think about the types of animals and plants that I normally see in my neighborhood. And also I thought about what those plants and animals need to survive. I also thought a little bit about what I need to survive and live a healthy and happy life. So you can start to think about that all of the plants and animals are going to need some form of water and nutrients, whether it's food or soil. And that as people, we also need those kind of nutrients. But today we're gonna to really focus on things that we wonder and notice when we go outside. So we're gonna go out on what is called a wonder walk. Now I have some great resources and ways for you to record your observations today, but if you don't have a printer at home, you can actually just make a chart on a piece of paper. So using your science notebook or anything you have at home to take notes, you will always start by writing the date. So today's date is April 20th. I got an early start today. It's 7.40 in the morning. After you've written the, the day and the time, you wanna make sure that you write down today's weather. So, ooh, I feel a nice breeze, so I can say it's windy. I notice it's pretty cloudy today. And I'm gonna check my watch or maybe check a phone or your family's phone and it is 49 degrees. Oh, I also wanna think about the season. And the season is spring. We know that spring has started and the season is spring. Okay, so when I'm going on a wonder walk, I'm gonna organize my thinking in two different ways. I'm gonna look for a plant today and I'm going to look for an animal today. So again, I'm just gonna make a really quick sketch of what my uh, recordings are going to look like today. So I'm gonna see a plant. I'm gonna leave some space to draw a sketch of the plant and I'm gonna write notice so I can write something interesting that I notice and I'm gonna write down wonder, so I can write down something interesting that I wonder, okay? I'm gonna do the exact same for animal. Again, you're just gonna make sketches today, so you don't need to make it super fancy. You just need a good place to keep your thinking so that if you choose to come back and look at it again, you'll be able to refer back to it. Okay, so I'm looking for a plant and an animal today, and I'm gonna think about something that I notice about it and ask a question. I'm also gonna think a little bit about what kind of things that that plant or animal has connections with outside and maybe some of the things it needs to survive. So I started leaving my um, apartment building this morning and started going on a walk and I already saw something really cool that I was wondering about. So come and look down here. And I bet this is something that you see a lot in your yards or neighborhoods. So this is a plant. I know it's a plant because it's coming out of the ground. So I'm gonna make a really, really quick sketch of this plant. So I notice the stem curves a little bit and then it's got this kind of ball in the middle. And again, a sketch is just really quick because you wanna take some quick notes so that when you come back to observe it later, you remember what it looked like the first time you saw it. Maybe your sketch has some labels. I know that is a stem. And then you're gonna try to look at things really, really closely because it might help you write down something that you notice and something that you wonder. So something that I notice right away is that this plant has a bunch of different parts. It has the stem like I know, but then in the middle there's this little ball. Coming out of the ball are these little brown parts and then we have these white parts that spoke out that are really, really soft. So I'm gonna say I notice this plant has many parts. Now something that I've learned a lot in when I um, talk with my students is that when we study plants and animals and other living things, 
a lot of parts have functions or jobs. So I'm gonna start, one of the things that I wonder is what is the job of each of these parts? What jobs or functions do each part, what jobs or functions do each part have for the plant's survival? So what about all of these special parts are going to help the plant survive? So again, really quick sketch, sketch really quick notice and really quick wonder about this plant in particular. So next up, and again, if you wanna take more time to observe multiple plants, you can spend as much time as you want outside. I just wanna show you a really quick idea so that you can go ahead and do this on your own. So the other thing that we're gonna start looking for is an animal. Now, I can't see any animals right now where I am, but I can certainly hear a lot of birds, and I'm gonna get really quiet so you can hear them too. It is the morning time, so it's pretty likely you're gonna hear more birds in the early morning. And when I left my apartment building, I also noticed that there was a squirrel. I can see it far away over there, but I don't wanna to get too, super close because I don't wanna scare that squirrel away. But as I'm noticing all those birds that I hear and those squirrels that I see, that I've seen this morning, I've also seen bunnies out here in the morning time. I'm starting to already think of another wonder, which is why do I hear and see more animals active in my yard in the early morning? So I'm gonna choose which animal I wanna sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and sketch that squirrel really, really quickly. I'm not really confident in my animal drawing, so I think I'm gonna go back and do my sketch a little bit later. But I am gonna just remember that I saw a squirrel. So I'm gonna write down the name and work on that sketch a bit later so I can take more time. And I'm gonna, I, I noticed that it was, it looked like it was eating something near the ground and it's going near the garden beds of my neighbors. So uh, the squirrel is eating something near my neighbor's garden beds. And one of the things that I wonder is, what is drawing it towards the garden beds? What is in the garden beds that it's really, um, that it's choosing to eat today? So what is it eating? Oops, what is it eating? My notes are really messy, but that's okay, because I'm gonna go back and look at them again. What is it eating? And I am also gonna add in, why do we see and here, more animals in the morning time. So I wrote that down, but I want you to think about, I want you to think about why you are coming outside and what time of day that you're going outside. So I noticed that there were a bunch in the morning but that's because I have some background knowledge of other times during the day where I've come outside for walks and I've definitely noticed that there are way more in the morning. You might notice something very different, but you can use your information and compare it to other times of the day or other days of the week. You can take a wonder walk every single day and you can also come back and write down more questions as they come up. Have a great time learning outside today, scientists.